Hi, I'm Daiso. I'm gonna give you the presentation about anarchism in Japan. Um, the speed is all right for the interpretation. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Um, um, I much prefer. Uh, I since I don't really know how much of the knowledge about Japanese anarchism and a movement um, that you have. Um, so uh, I'd much prefer that I get uh, questions and I would answer that kind of form. So uh, for the recording, probably it's gonna go on and I'll edit it later or something. Repeat the situation. Okay. So please feel free to drop, throw in some information. I might uh, stop you so that I can finish for one sentence or something, but then of course I will try to hear your um, questions and uh, try to answer it. And uh, also, I'm not a specialist or anything, so please do not overestimate the knowledge that I have. Um, I might make some mistakes and you go find some random Japanese guy and maybe they think completely different way. This is my personal experience and a personal uh, perspective. Okay. So, uh, okay. Um, first, I'm going to briefly uh, show you the situation that we have in Japan, specifically Tokyo, where uh, I'm from. Um, now Japan is led by a party, political party called LDP, LDP, Liberal Democratic Party. Um, the prime minister is from that party, uh, Shinzo Abe. Um, this guy is not so different, or this agenda, this party's agenda is not so much different from the so-called G20 uh, countries, like, like you. So basically, the country is going moving forward with two wheels together. One is uh, neoliberalism, and the other is nationalism. You get the picture. But the uh, worst case is that we are having a fucking Tokyo Olympic Games next year, 2020, and Abe Shinzo is using this as an old excuse to do any shit that he can, that he, he wanna do. Right, the gentrify, gentrification or nationalism, this is a national project, so we've got to unite as one and fuck the individual tiny opinion complaints, shut up, this is for the national profit. Um, that's basic situation. Okay. Um, are you interested in the history class? If you are, then I can, I can show you some anarchist history in Japan. All right. Um, well, as all of you know, or has to know, anarchism has been in Japan since the beginning of history, beginning of human race. Like everywhere in the world, anarchism were there. Um, I can show you the example from uh, Edo period, which was from 1603 to 1868. So, oh uh, yeah, during this time we had the peasants uprising or farmers uprising, and when they made their naming list that, okay, let's get her up, let's organize ourselves, we're gonna find the rulers or the ruling class, then they made a name list, and they didn't use just one paper, paper. they made a, um, either on the flag or on top of the hat, the Asian hat, you, you have, probably you may have seen it, um, it's like an umbrella, you know, made by bamboo and everything. Um, it's round shaped. So everybody wrote their name, cut the sun, then press it for the fingerprint, then goes around. The point is, it's round shaped, so it, it's, it doesn't show who is the leader. There is no leader, or a vice leader, or vice president, or nobody's leading. It's autonomous, um, no hierarchical movement. So that's, that's just one example that we had even before the anarchism as, uh, as you know, um, as a Western philosophy or political philosophy was introduced to Japan. Because in the period during this era, Japan completely closed up our borders. Um, not actually completely. We had a little bit of connection with China and Holland, but basically no connection with Western um, economy or civilization, so forth. But uh, in 1868, um, there was a major revolution, the shogunate collapsed, and he gave up the power to the emperor. So, um, that time, 
all the all of a sudden all the Western ideas or science or philosophy, religion, everything just came into Japan. So did the uh, socialism and Christianity. So some people are like attracted to these ideas in Japan. That time, Christianity was considered as a revolutionary idea because、uh, it's under the name of God. Everybody is equal, no matter what your、uh, class you're from.、Um, but then we kind of moved forward.、Uh, some people are not felt not enough with the Christianity or just vague socialism, so they found anarchism. Um, you don't have to remember the names, but、uh, I have three names. One is uh, uh, Kotok Shusui. He introduced Bakunin or Kropotkin's ideas into Japan, and he was uh, uh, intellectually organizing the anarchist movement in Japan. But he was uh, killed, uh, hanged by the government because they said、uh, he was plotting an assassination of an emperor,、uh, which was complete bullshit. That was a frame-up shit. So. He was killed. Then、uh, his his、um, philosophically speaking younger brother is Osugi Sakai, Sakai Osugi, and this guy also translated lots of Kropotkin's works. And he actually went to Paris for the May Day, and he was the one、um, agitated the people to go on march on the street. What are you doing here? Why、well, you are just sitting and listening? Come on, let's go on the street. And he got arrested and deported to Japan. Um, also, we had the Ito Noe, Noe Ito.、Um, she was、uh, an alka feminist in Japan, in, yeah, in Japan, and she was a partner of Osugi Sakai, the man I mentioned before. But、uh, both of them were killed,、uh, lynched by the military police when,、uh, in 1923, the big earthquake hit Tokyo, and. After this disaster, we had lots of rumors that Korean people are po- putting poison in the wells, or、mm-hmm. socialists are plotting some revolution. And led by these rumors, which got no evidence or anything, these two and also five years old nephew were butchered, killed, lynched.、Um, Emma Goldman actually wrote officially、uh, published some statement to protest against this. <coughs> So after these three died,、um, Japanese anarchism kind of went down. We also had the Girotin Society. It is a Girotinsha, Girotin Society, but they are more of a direct terrorist action. They plotted lots of assassination of、uh, important people, let's say, VIPs, VIPs. But it didn't really work out. And as you know, as a history,、um, Japan went to a more of the totalitarian state. Stage、uh, during the war time, so、uh, pretty much no anarchism going on. Of course, we had a little bit of resistance and everything, but pretty much. The second round came up around the sixties and the seventies、uh, when the student revolt time. By the way, can I ask you a question? Is this interesting? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very. Very. Because、uh, I fucking hate the class, you know, like lectures and shit. You just sit back and listen to all the boring part. So yeah, okay. I'm gonna go on if this is interesting. In sixties and seventies, we had the、uh, um, student revolt,、um, uh, li- like you had here too.、Um, especially around the Kansai,、uh, western side of Japan, we had the strong anarchist movement. Tokyo was rather me- led by、uh, um, Marxists or Leninists, or、um, yeah, communists, and so on, but.、Uh, In Narita Airport, Narita Airport, that is one of the biggest airport in Tokyo.、Um, that place was called Sanrizuka. Sanrizuka. Probably, if you're into riot porn, you might have seen some crashes and fights. Have you? No. Oh no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you should. That's pretty fun. Pretty fun shit going on. So there, the black helmets. That's how they call themselves because they wore the helmets and、uh, the color of helmets. Suggested or show the sects they were in, or their agendas, like、uh, Marx-Leninists. One group, just, it's a white helmet, but in middle like a mohawk, red line. But anarchists used a complete black one, so they called they were called black helmets or kuroheru. Um, but then after that, Japan enjoyed、uh, 
um, economical prosperity and boost. So、uh, people are kind of away from the so-called revolutionary ideas because you have all the food, you have house, you have a dog, you have children, you have a car. Then okay, maybe this is satisfying life. But in nineties, when the, this so-called、uh, bubble economy crashed, and we were in a <coughs> deep shit situation,、um, so、uh, anarchism kind of came up again. It, Alongside with the, this、uh, anti-globalization movement、uh, all around the world, like a、uh, battle in Seattle and all,、um, yeah. So from this anti-globalization movement, we had some spaces like this. This is a、uh, Cafe Lavanderia. This is located in Shinjuku.、Um, it is a cafe, but、uh, Shinjuku is one of the biggest.、Uh, City in Japan, it's lots of bars or shopping malls and everything. A shopping, it's not a mall, but whatever.、Um, and also, it's this place is specifically located at the、uh, um, the biggest LGBT area in Japan. It's called Nichome,、uh, gay district, so called.、Um, that's why they got some kind of radical ideas as well. Could you could you give the description? This is Fermi Muglusa, yeah. You know, you know him. Fermi Muglusa. Yeah, Fermi Muglusa. What? He played there. <laughs> yeah, we have live shows, and、uh, next one is probably a different space. This is IRA Irregularism Asylum,、um, an info shop basically. So probably you feel familiar if you go there. Random stickers. Oh yeah, uh, we we.、Uh, Again, lavanderia. We have、uh, anti-fascist reggae night or something. I don't remember. And that's supposed to be our prime minister Abe Shinzo.、Um, this is a band CD jacket. On the left side, it says Hisen says on Teiko, meaning、um, anti-war, existence, resistance. This is at uh, uh, yeah. This one is a、uh, Utkarv collective in、uh, um, IRA. They do this much. This is at Cafe Lavanderia. We also have some intellectual, you know,、uh, lectures or talk shows or events.、Ah, that's pretty much it. And also the Arab spot, I couldn't find a good picture.、Um, I can show you later if you are into it. But、uh, Shirotun Run or Amateur Revolt is also、um, a pretty important factor. They are located in Koenji, and it's like one street. Of lots of shops, you know,、um, but they started some sort of community movement there, and they always have some weird shit ideas for the demonstrations or the movements.、Um, okay, so these kind of places、uh, came up around Tokyo or around Japan. I'm not very familiar with the movement in Kansai. Not that I don't have any connection, but、uh, I cannot really. Show you examples in a concrete way.、Um, there are some cafes, or especially around the so-called homeless district or Nishinari. That place we have a community cafe and everything. But in Tokyo, specifically in Tokyo. But okay, these kind of places get up, and they kind of had the communication to each other like a network, loose network. But uh, uh, it wasn't. Really, a big stuff. It was sort of underground movement, but it came to overground when in in 2011 March 11th, the massive earthquake hit Japan, and after that, next day on 12th,、uh, we had the nuclear meltdown in Fukushima. Do you need explanation about that? No, right.、Uh, so. After this, the very first group who did the demonstration about this nuke was Shirotono and these amateur revolt guys. So these amateur revolt guys organized the demonstration, and lots of anarchists went there. And after that, we started to find each other, like all around Japan. If you see a demonstration of a nuke, and that was a very, very big shit, so everybody went to the demonstration. Lots of people were involved politically. To anti-nuke movement, and then we started to see each other. You see a black flag over there, and we are not familiar with those people. All of a sudden, they appeared on the streets of 
why not? And we started talking and we started kind of connecting each other. And that's also led to, um, after this earthquake, uh, some racist groups uh, rise on the street. They were before on the internet specifically called Internet Uyoku or Internet Right Wingers. But they started coming up on the street, marching around the Korean district. Especially we have uh, uh, discrimination against Korean people or Japanese Korean, uh, Korean Japanese people who are the second or third generations of the Korean people who came to Japan during the wartime while the Korea was uh, uh, colonized by Japan, basically. So there are lots of discrimination against them. Um, so we kind of formed Antifa uh, counter demonstrations and everything. And after that, so we are now on the way of uh, organizing ourselves, like got a rather big scale um, connection or organization or l even loose uh, network along the anarchists. Any questions? Wait, wait. Um, I have three. Three? Yes. Oh, uh, greedy. First one would be, um, I have this rumor in my head because I haven't read anything on, on the history or like on the Japanese or Korean anarchism, but I have a rumor, like some people told me that at some point it had a little bit like a nationalist or patriotic flavor in it. Is it true? Like so, there were like people were actually counter posing, like unlike Western anarchism, the Japanese and the oh, Korean yes. would be yes, like yes, yes, more yes, patriotic, yes. like more like Japan focused or something like this. So that would be one if that is true, and then maybe have some. It is motherfucking true. And should I just go with others, other questions or? Sh sure, uh, yeah. uh, whichever you prefer. And maybe okay. also, I don't know how long have you been observing uh, the organizing or the movements here, or but maybe you already see some differences, or is it like all mm. kind of westernized there as well, or you see like that there is a difference between how you see people doing things here and and there, and the third one. Yeah, not... Okay, the very first question is actually pretty important in my, uh, from my experience. So I said we found, started finding each other, but uh, sometimes you say Antifa flag, but that was carried by a famous right-wing activist or something. So we went there and what the fuck? Then they went, oh, we don't want any racists in this beautiful Japan. So <laughs> we did have, or we don't want nukes in this great country, magnificent country, or something like that. A worst case, are really right-wing fascist nationalists who are anti-nuke because of the logic that North Korea would attack us, and that would be a target to destroy Japan. So let's have no nuke plants, instead let's arm ourselves with nuclear bombs. That kind of logic were there. And of, yeah, as you said, it is a very important part that uh, uh, some nationalists were also counter-demonstrating against the racists. Um, some of them were pretty racist against, for instance, Russian people for around, around the problem of the four islands. Maybe you heard of it, we have some sort of territory issues with Russia from the World War II. Um, so they are always there like against Russia for in sake, for, for the uh, sake of Japan or national uh, prosperity, but they are also against these internet right wingers, and it's pretty complicated. But it is a very good point. The second one is a little bit hard because, as you could, as you can tell, um, I'm pretty okay with English. Am I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that was kind of compliment fishing. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, yeah, so I, what I learned about anarchism is not necessarily only from Japan. I, I, I could, you know, check any information all around the world, thus form some sort of connections or a mixture in myself. Um, and it's not limited to me. Uh, it depends on, really depends on the anarchists. Some are very from the student era type. Student era type will tend to be rather 
uh, authentic Japanese uh, student movement style, you know. So they don't really go on with the stickers or graffiti. So I will come back about the art as well because it is very important for me. But uh, they don't really use that tactics as an art or music or these kind of stuff. More of the intellectual arguments only. So I fucking hate them. No, I don't. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, of course, we are, have a uh, worldwide um, influenced anarchist movement as well. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing I'm part of it. Like Antifa or they get in from anti-Nazi movement in Germany. Um, so, yeah, we, I, I can say that we have differences in many cases. But today, around me, like, if you, if I look around my community, um, the, the, the basic point of tactics and everything is not so different. What's different is rather the view of the people around what I'm guessing is. We don't really have the culture of civil obedience, disobedience. We do have civil obedience, of course. Civil dis disobedience or individualism that you have in a good way, not as in a capitalistic divided way which I bet you have to, but more like live and let live kind of feeling. We don't really have that because we had the totalitarian village community. Not necessarily that was a bad stuff, bad thing, because we needed that for the agricultural reasons. If one guy stops working and starts, you know, painting or something, then they will starve to death. So we had this kind of communityism, which still remains today. So, from that, I see a lot of difference on the street, for instance. We, apart from the very big cities, we seldom see stickers or graffiti. And when we do, it's not political at all. In Tokyo, like some very busy places, we started to see Antifa stickers, especially after this uh, racist rise and everything. But, uh, yeah. But that's maybe my personal perspective. Ah, uh, yeah. And how is the culture of resistance uh, transmitted between people? Is there, is there people educating others, training others how how they uh, act or what techniques and tactics can be used, or is people just do it spontaneously? Uh, you mean to to spread anarchism or? Yeah, and especially the, the action part of anarchism. Action part of anarchism. Well, this, is, this sounds pretty pathetic and uncool, but we are a little bit away from you because we are not at the stage of like what, is, what to do with anarchism or you know how anarchists could do something and stuff like that. We are more at the stage of what the hell is anarchism or at worst, they don't even know the word anarchism. Um, here, probably what you have is like rebelling on the anarchists on a national or public TV and everything, like as terrorists. You know, there was a peaceful demonstration, but some anarchists went violent and stuff like that. But in Japan, there's nothing about anarchism. Nothing. Like on the news or a newspaper, TV, everywhere, they say nothing about anarchism, right? Um, especially about Fukushima, uh, the anarchists were a pretty huge part of it, or a, 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 this Antifa left Antifa counter demonstrations. Anarchism was also a big part of it, but they always said like anti nuke people or usual ordinary people or peace or activists, and are never an anarchist. So what we are trying to do is to spread there is actually a fucking idea called anarchism and it is fucking awesome probably we are around that stage and in order in order to do that i will have more of the examples but uh uh in my opinion we need more of the crossroads culturally and politically um because it as i said we still have like for, from that answer, we still have this uh, 60s, 70s student movement uh, anarchists as well. But what they do is get up at a tiny room and they just talk, talk, talk and do nothing. 
like abstract ideas and how to, you know, uh, organize the workers' general strikes and stuff like that. Even though there's just two or three or four, five, maybe at most ten. So I believe that is problematic. The anarchism has to be more of the flourishing or around in many uh, genres. May it be restaurants, arts, music, movies. Um, so I am on the way of experimenting on it. By making sense. What about in the rural areas? Sorry? What about in the rural areas of Japan? Is there any community? Which area? In the countryside. A countryside. Um, countryside, yes. Countryside, mm, it is not necessary anarchism. But we have a, a stream of uh, uh, young people going back to countryside and buy a very cheap old house, take care of it themselves, start a farm and doing it kind of collectively, collective way. But they are not necessarily politicalized in an anarchism way. They are more of a uh, neoliberal, you know, the background. Um, that's another thing that we have. Uh, now today in the neoliberal, uh, neoliberal agenda what's scary is the involvement like lots of cool ideas or new ideas the grassroots struggles are involved, cleansed, packed, back, packed in you know, decorated nicely and sold back to us um, one example is a LGBT hamburger in England like pink pound movement it's a lettuce, guacamole, um, bacon, tomato, hamburger, and with wrapped with a, a rainbow um, wrapping. Nice. And they are selling it with nine pounds or something. So uh, we skipped, basically, in Japan, we skipped this uh, grassroots struggle part. Then we just write on top of the neoliberal part. So this going back to the countryside and doing the community themselves, it's not because of the, their uh, grassroots struggle and led to the idea that we have to actually go back there and organize ourselves, but it is fashionable today to go back there and have a farm. So there, there could be a way or there could be communities that are politicalized, but uh, so far I'm not familiar with that. Uh, it's maybe more like a general question. Like in Germany, we have just a chancellor and a party, and in Japan, you also have like an emperor. Yes. What is like the feeling for the anarchists to the emperor? Like how are they stand with them? Um, in general, idea anarchists are pretty much. I'd say all of them are anti-emperor. Like they hate emperor. But me personally, I've never met him. How can I hate him? I've never talked to him. But I'm against the emperor system itself because it's fucking humane and waste of tax. We don't fucking need it. Come on. And maybe the last emperor wanted to be a rapper, a gangster rapper or racer or, you know, airplane pilot. But only because he was the first born son in that family, he couldn't pick these ways. He had to be a fucking emperor. So that's also inhumane. Come on. Poor boy. See? Yeah. Uh, but in general, of course, as a system, we are deadly against it. Especially because the last, uh, the, now we have a new one from this year. It's very really confusing. Hirohito, Showa Emperor, didn't take any responsibility of World War II. Nothing. Nothing. No charge. No at all. Zero. Because American army thought, okay, we could use him to uh, uh, centralize Japanese people. And if they say, if we, if we say America is a friend of emperor and the Japanese people is going to follow us, and we did. So we, there, there were, like Nuremberg the Criminal Court, we had the Tokyo Criminal International uh, War Criminal Court. But uh, their prime ministers or some politicians from the army, they were charged, severely some of them, which is fair. But the uh, emperor, nothing. So we are pretty fucking pissed off about that. 
maybe connecting uh, to what you just said, um, the history of World War II in Germany, it's always said like um, people got into uh, like, um, like researching in the history and what happened and so on. And well, you can see it from one side or another side whether this is enough or not, but many people say in Germany this was done very, in a very good fashion. Um, and I'd like to know, since uh, Japan always appears to me like a super nationalist country, how is like the connection towards the World War II history and mm -hmm. also like the the things that happened, for example, in China with the massacres and so on? And um, like, how how is it in society, or is there like any force in society driving to like a direction and researching more on that? Okay. Um, long story short, now is the actual point that we are changing, transforming to something else. But uh, the, the, co the progressive and conservative, this idea is kind of hard to define in Japan, like left wing or right wing, because we have a constitution that we have after the war time. And in this ninth chapter, we have this um, so-called peaceful, uh, peaceful con constitution, um, abundance of war. Uh, we are not supposed to have an army, which we have, as a self-defense force, which is the seventh strongest army in the world now, <coughs> apparently. But on the constitution, it is said that we cannot have any. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so, you, you, you cannot really say, like, um, it is progressive because it's anti-war. But it's conservative that we are still following that old constitution that was made in 1945. And actually, it was in 51, but that's another story. But again, in this constitution, the first chapter is about the emperor. Like, we need emperor. We have an emperor as a symbol of Japan. So, it's kind of mixed up. But specifically, I'm going to talk about World War II. Um, the huge difference with Nazi and Japan, J Japan um, Empire as long as the, uh, I mean, in terms of history, education and all, is that we were taught we were victims by the army, or at that time the government. And it's not even about like brainwashed, deceived or anything. Well, it, well we have that, but uh, it's more of we are severely replaced that time. We couldn't do anything. And... For instance, in August, August is always about the war and TV and movie and everything, because we finished war in August 15. But it's always a poor people starving and a bully army guy came in and, uh, you know, take all the food away and beat him. And if you say something peaceful, they're going to, you know, attack you, and kick you away or stuff like that. So we don't really have this uh, sense of guilt that we, we actually, as a person, did something wrong that time. That led to the, so, but, but, but again, in the education, for instance, I've been through, uh, there are always this uh, so-called peaceful education. What the fuck ever, just no war, man, no fucking war. That's it, no war. People suffer, people starve, no war again, never. So that was the education that we had. But uh, because we kind of lacked the fact that we did, we actually did something shitty, and we always focus on the victim side, we kind of forget that we are actually predators. We were actually predators that time. So Nanking Massacre is now on a hot topic, as you said. There are lots of denials for that, or about the number of the victims. Um, some say like it was uh, 200,000 people were killed. Some say no, it was just 600 minor ones. As if the number fucking matters. But, so, kind of like Holocaust denials, but uh, it's much stronger in Japan, in my opinion. And since Abe Shinzo, the Prime Minister, is now trying to change um, the, the Constitution and make this self-defense force the army that we have, and not an army technically, according to the Constitution, to an actual army. They're trying to define it as an army. Mm, so, last week we had the national election and they failed to keep the 
two thirds of the seats, entire Congress seats, so that they can um, suggest the change of the constitution. Change of the constitution. I sound really dumb. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't reach that. So now they are trying to find a way, you know, to hold hands with the uh, opponent parties who have the same agenda of changing a constitution so that they could reach it, go over it. So that's pretty much the situation we have right now. So the situation is all right. If that's cool, I'm going to start talking about rather my personal uh, actions, direct actions that I'm involved with. Okay. I would like to ask um, what kind of, uh, I don't know, policing, repression or whatever you face. So, for example, can you advertise your uh, spaces and cafes freely and openly on the internet or do you have to feel someone knocking on the door? We do have secret police and I'm sure they have a list of ours. But uh, at the same time, they cannot really do anything apart from following you and check your garbage or, you know, send a spine, maybe, to collect the information. But uh, in terms of the general repression, like, for instance, if you go to the demonstration, it's pretty different from here, in my, as I see it. Um, I was arrested in Montreal. I was kettled. It was like... 30 people or something at once. We got kettled and one by one, uh, you know, everything. I was lucky that I could get away from it. But in Japan, what's going to happen is they're not going to arrest all of you or anything. They just pick one, one of you and replace severely, heavily on that individual to show the example. In Japan, if you once get arrested, then that's the end of your life. You cannot get any job. You cannot have the contract for the apartment. Or you have a really little choice of jobs or those contracts or families and everything. It's going to be so hard for you. So out of the fear that you could be that one to be arrested. Oh, by, by the way, those police, riot cops, they decide before the demonstration how many people they want to catch out of this demonstration. They always do that. That was a scandal, actually. They decided like, okay, this time too. This time five, because this is a tiny demonstration and nobody is really watching it, so we can do whatever we want. This time one, because it's a huge demonstration, quite lots of people are involved, so let's just keep it with one. They always use uh, disobedience. Two motherfucking what? Right? But so yeah, we, we do have, we do have repression. Um. I don't know if you already talked about it, I think you pointed it out a little bit. Um, in my head I have uh, this kind of um, idea of Japanese society um, with uh, very high working morals. With, um, high, high what? The, the morals of uh, working, very ambitious, okay. sacrificing mm -hmm. themselves, uh, the people sacrificing themselves for, work, for, the, for, the, for the state. Yes. Um, and this idea is quite strong. And, uh, would you say that uh, this um, affects uh, your work? Uh, because I could imagine this, that it's uh, more difficult to, to convince people that there's other ways when they just uh, are very into this idea of existing. Yes, or is it indeed. Just um, today it's slightly different because uh, after 2001, that time, Koizumi Junichiro, it doesn't matter, the name doesn't matter. The Prime Minister at that time changed the law and we have more of the precariats, right? Before it was a big company, maybe big or small. Once you get hired, you will be there, work for that company forever. Um, then you get the pension after that, that's it, end of your life. Um, so you have this tendency of community, not as a local community, not as a, a friends or family, but the company was your community. So your boss and your, your henchman, henchman, hen, 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 henchman, are, are your huh? oh, co-workers, just, just let's say co-workers, are your community, used to be. But now we are more of the uh, loose workers, <laughs> plecaleas or 
especially in the city. So now we are kind of starting to have new lifestyles. Although it is so hard to make your life living, uh, make your living. What was that? Meet, meet at the end. Meet the end? Mm. Meet the end. Yeah. Um, it is very hard. You have to hard work for that. Um, there is no security, for instance. I mean, like uh, healthcare or paid holidays and everything. And even if you had the normals that you have to go through are so much that you bring the job back to home. Because unless you cannot finish it. Now they have a new law that, oh well, no, we, we still don't have that law, but we are having an argument that we are, that it should be mandatory to have paid holidays, like in Germany. But, and some companies started doing it, like Northern Gyode. Some Wednesdays of a month, specific month, uh, they shan't stay at the company, they have to go back home. But the norma, the task that they have to go through, hasn't changed. So they have to bring the job back and work on it. So that's probably the situation. But as I was trying to move on, uh, there are some ways to probably ignite it. So I'm going to talk about generally two um, actions that I'm pretty much involved in as a main members. I've, I'm in, involved in, for instance, I'm uh, inside collective Café Lavanderia or that Udkavin. Uh, I've been to Udkavin or Sowin session of uh, IRA. But uh, uh, first I'm going to talk about Tokyo Spring. Could you find the file says uh, probably TP, uh, TPH, ah, TSP, <laughs> TH, a T, fucking hell, <laughs> TSHP. Okay, as I said, uh, Ave, Ave Agenda, or LDP government is pushing their neoliberal agenda um, to gentrify the city, so that in names of Tokyo Olympic Games. And for the Tokyo Olympic Games, the city has to be cultural and clean and without homeless people. But we have approximately 5,000 homeless people, according to the government. And you know how they count them. They go around the business time from five, uh, from nine to, uh, from 10 to five or something. They walk around the city and count the homeless people's number. Oh, oh God. So I suppose there are a lot more. And this neoliberalism, I could show one uh, example out of Shibuya Warden. Warden, like a city, Shibuya city. Um, the city basically legalized the same-sex marriage. It's not national level, so it's not technically a marriage, but at least inside that city they are uh, considered as a partner. Like, they have legal rights for that, which is good. But the same, same, law, same mayor of the city of Shibuya uh, kicked out homeless people from a park so that they can privatize the park and make a profit out of it for the skateboard parks or, or uh, bordering uh, walls. They have to pay some to get into those places or even to the park. Uh, I think they they sold it to Nike and they are trying to change the name to Nike Park or something and they got severely bashed and all. So that kind of in that kind of situation, homeless people are they they always had uh, some sort of community in the parks or where they live. They make houses. They kind of know each other. They talk and they share and everything. But because of these kind of agendas, they are kicked out from the park. They got nowhere to go. There's only one spot for one homeless person to sleep. And their community is kind of being destroyed. So we we had, could you find a picture, just say Tokyo Spring, it's just a logo, but uh, my friend insisted me to show the logo because it's a cool one, apparently. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this one. Uh, Tokyo Spring was originally a film screening and have a discussion kind of event. Oh. <laughs> It's, it is a group, but it's very loose if there is no membership. If you come, you're a member. If you leave, that's okay. Um, but this is uh, done by anarchists, especially my friend uh, from Bosnia originally, Suleiman Burkic. 
he and I and the other members organized this Tokyo Spring events at Cafe Lavanderia, the cafe I showed you before. Um, then we, at some point, we figure out, figure out, okay, homeless people are suffering and they are at the very edge of the cliff. They are the most the urgent issue. So we joined one group called Soup no Kai, a group of soup. They walk around and give some miso soup to homeless people or hand out some food and everything. But they are fucking asshole and boring people. They, they, we, me and Suleiman and I, my friend and I always brought cigarettes, sleeping bags, because they love cigarettes, for instance. And they are always, you know, trying to find the end, end the yeah. Butt, yeah, end the from end the ground. Yeah, so they deserve some good cigarettes from time to time, so why not? But they hated it. They said, like, oh, that's not good for health, and some homeless people uh, issues. Okay. Then, some, the next, then at the end of the patrol, they came and said, oh, homeless people are so happy with cigarettes, could you bring them again? And bring it yourself. No, we don't really want to touch the cigarettes. And Okay, fuck it. <laughs> So we kind of left that group and formed our own Tokyo Spring Homeless Patrol. Um, just random pictures, anything we'll do. So we basically go around the cities and I'm handing out the cigarettes, right? And uh, sometimes if you're lucky, they get some weed. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, I got this one worked in Nuremberg as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, so. You see, you see the city lights behind, it's a prosperity, shopping, uh, drinking, uh, pachinko or gambling and everything is there, everybody's happy over there, but you see this. You, they are hidden very well, they are buried, buried in the city. So our, the, the cause that we have, as, a, as anarchists especially, is one, of course, always, help, th help these people, help these people. Just give fucking food so that they wouldn't starve. Uh, give them sleeping bags so that they wouldn't be frozen. But at the same time, what's also important is that we are visualizing them. We are visualizing the homeless people that they actually exist in Tokyo. Beneath the fucking nail signs and all the salary men walking around and uh, getting drunk and everything. They, we try to walk around, visualize it so that people could see that they actually exist. And this movement is led by anarchists. That's what's important to us. Uh, could you go back? And also, maybe you saw this guy, uh, that guy that with the red butt, that's Chris, my friend from United States. Could you go back to the file? There is one called uh, Food Not Bomb Yokosuka, F-N-E-1. That's that one. So out of out of Tokyo Spring Homeless Patrol, that guy, Chris, from United States, he was originally a Navy, American, American Navy guy. But uh, he came to Japan in Yokosuka, that's a huge Navy base there. And he all of a sudden has some kind of awakening or something, and he transformed into a hardcore anarchist. I don't, know, I don't know what the fuck happened, maybe he dropped some acid or something. So he formed this uh, food no bomb, Yokosuka. They, they distribute some vegan food on the street. Oh yeah, that's Chris. So this this was this this was out of the community of Tokyo Spring Homeless Patrol. And Yokosuka is slightly away, like two hours two hours away on a train from Tokyo, in the central Tokyo. So that and they have there is a, one place called Kotobuki Cho. The name doesn't matter, it's a workers district. The, the day workers district. Day workers? Homeless or day workers district. So around there, they started distributing food. Could you move on to the next? Yeah. Food no bombs. Heiki dewa nak tabemono. It says, uh, no weapons instead food. Hmm. And they are sort of, as, as you can see, that on the left side, they are not necessarily uh, homeless people nor anarchist people, but they got interest in it and they kind of started to be involved in it. They, they found one bagel, you know, bread, bagel bread place, and this place distributes, uh, they're not political at all, but they could get uh, 
food for free so that they can give it to homeless people. A little bit outdated to sell, but completely okay to eat. So they floss it, keep it, give it to them, and we spread it. So that's food not on your course card. So do you have any questions about the homeless situations or the patrol that I have? Oh, yeah. Yeah, when you're talking about giving the homeless people food, cigarettes, sleeping bags, how do you get the money? Like, where do you get the money to buy? Uh, we throw in, and also we get donations. Okay, uh, is that cool? Is that cool? Then at the end, I'm gonna talk about uh, my probably main project that I'm involved in, which is called TKA4. TKA4. As probably you saw it on the flyers. But. Um, yeah, next one, next one, next one, next one. Ah, this one. That is actually just only this part is TKA4. <laughs> yeah, boom, whoa, huge, great. No, just only, just only this part. Um, this is a. Uh, T TKF4 stands for Toei Koenji Apato Yongoto. No. <laughs> Toei means uh, uh, metropolitan. Um, Koenji is the name of the place, station. Apart is apartment, apato. Then four is fourth building. So it is a, a Tokyo city owned uh, residential building complex. They have four buildings because after the World War II, lots of people lost their houses or residential areas. So government took in charge of uh, building those ugly buildings and so that people could live in. But now it's, as you can see, it's very old. The first story is all shops, but uh, it used to be, but now pretty much abundant. So we are always passing through. And as I said, I, I have a, you know, I checked many shits, what's going on in Europe, and this squat, squatting culture, squats is so cool. So we are always dreamed of squatting this building. Then we found this part um, empty. And it's on the paper, it says like, just call us. The thing is, this building will be torn down. If there is a plan of torn, tearing this building down and reform the place around uh, the, after the Olympic Games in 2020. But until then, we can use it for free. Uh, not for free, we have to pay the rent, but uh, comparatively extremely cheap, and we can do any shit inside. We don't have to care about the noise because it's a big street. Behind it's just a uh, park, then temple and cemetery. So unless the dead people's gonna wake up and come up and knock on the door, okay, could you, could you? it's gonna be fine. So we got this spot, and what's inside is the other pictures. Uh, yeah, this is when we clean. So it, these four in, in the middle are the main organizers. There is another girl from Morocco as well. She's a main organizer too. But um, So we did the art exhibition or... Um, this is probably a workshop for residents. How to make your own residence. Like how to make your own room. From, from out of nowhere. So it's sort of learning from homeless at the same time. Um, you know, make your idea reality kind of workshop. Yeah, I'm sitting there in my idea room, apparently. And we had uh, graffiti on the wall. We have lots of artists. And this is the point I want to emphasize. Um, the art and politics in terms of, especially in terms of anarchism, are divided now in Japan. Uh, this, this graffiti or cool art, you know, rebellious art culture are all taken by the neoliberals. And we don't really have it as a political site. So we try to reclaim the art into anarchism. And I'm hoping this place is gonna be a crossroad of art, um, politics, and a culture, um, yeah, like community. And I'm hoping to do that. This, that, well, we had the tattoo, as you can see, tattoo convention, but they are from Taiwan. Some, some people are from Taiwan. Getting tattooed is a Korean. They are good comrades of mine. Um, 
they, they came with an anarcho punk to Japan, so they came and they tattooed. That guy, I work for him. Uh, this is my advertisement time, so if you come to Japan and if you want to get a tattoo, he does a traditional Japanese handbooking style, so uh, call me. Then I will give you 5% <laughs> off. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, it's okay, it's cool. Yeah, so uh, this... First, maybe you saw some random picture with lots of paintings. Uh, uh, we did... Uh, this, this is uh, post-Fukushima... A uh, precariat theatrical play or something. And the fact that we could do anything, so they brought in some beer and cigarettes as well during the, their performance. And that cannot be done in a private or official, maybe, uh, theaters. So that was pretty cool. It, some exhibitions are there. Oh, where was it? Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Yes. This, originally, it was just only white room. So we started, and we had an event, like, you can paint whatever you like. So we painted these. You, you know this guy? It's Minomonta. I don't know. I really don't know why he picked that guy. But anyways. Then we just, when we got bored of these paintings, we painted all white. Then we did... Uh, the same or the, the painting again. The next one? Oh no, the other one. Okay, yes. Yeah, I saw Ellie or Betty in the bathroom here, so I kind of felt familiar with that Elizabeth. <laughs> now, now we just painted all black and uh, we have two screens. Um, one is for movie or projectile for this kind of, uh, literally this kind of event. And the other is already kind of vandalized by fucking artists. <coughs> Always vandalized, a beautiful white wall. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, I suppose. Hmm. So um, we are trying to make it a cross point of communities. Sorry. Point, and at the same time, to uh, uh, come back to your question, to show that we can actually have fun in terms of politics and culture, including art or music, all combined. And that can be done out of anarchism as a political philosophy. To actually visualize it is probably important in Tokyo. And that's what we are trying to do right now. And also we are trying to seek for the, um, seek to organize any kind of community outside of this TKF. Or we are alongside with Shiroto no Ran, Amateur Revolt, Café Lavanderia, IRA, and those communities. We are in solidarity. Especially because Café Lavanderia is now under the fear of eviction.